Okay, we call this meeting to order. Getting, I can't breathe, so I can't see. You. Secretary, you ready? <coughs> I don't have a. <laughs> we don't have a secretary. We're missing Mary Ann, aren't we? Kim might be done. Hmm. I mean, Mary. Kim will be here, I would imagine, but Mary may not. Oh. You need a pen? You need no, a microphone. Does that one work? No, I got a big mouth. Can you reach across? Yeah, I'm fine. Here. Just for you. Okay. Mr. Ture. Here. Mr. Heisel. Here. Mr. Brown. Dr. Hall. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. We will now start with our good news portion of our board meeting. And tonight we are featuring Coretta Scott King Magnet School. So we welcome this evening our principal, Rachel Newcomb. All righty. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Uh, every trimester, CSK participates in a social action project. These projects are coordinated by a rotating team of teachers, and they're designed so that every member of our student body actively participates in whatever the project is. We were particularly pleased with our second trimester action project, and that's why I'm here tonight to share the good news of that project with you. Um, during the second trimester, we focused on what I think is an exceptionally worthy cause, which was Operation Care Package. We started with a family collection of toiletries, playing cards, and socks for our troops. We had a goal of 700 items, and we managed to raise or collect 1,051. So we were thrilled with that turnout. We also did an additional staff fundraiser and raised $188 to buy snacks and non-perishable items to include in our care packages as well. Um, during the first week of February, every student in our school worked with a buddy from a different grade level, so we had some nice older and younger pairings. They got to design a box that's used, you can see some of them behind you, I apologize. Um, they got to design a box for Operation Care Package, and they also got to write a card or a letter to some of our troops. So everyone was a part of the collection, and they were also part of that creative process, working together um, to decorate and then write letters for our troops. Um, we were really proud as a staff and as a learning community of the letters and the designs on the boxes and all of the generous contributions that our project produced. And I personally am extremely grateful to the teachers who coordinated this particular project because it was fairly labor intensive for them. Um, but before I conclude my presentation tonight, as it is a brief one, um, I'd like to recognize our IB coordinator, uh, Mrs. Shannon Braun, who's here tonight. Yes, you have to stand up. Come on now. Shannon is the only person who works on every single action project. She coordinates each one every trimester from start to finish, wrangling staff members and students and handling all of our publicity, writing um, news for our newsletters. It's really quite a lot of work. So I just wanted to say thank you to her right here in front of everyone and recognize her for all of her efforts. And in the, you know, in the spirit of Operation Care Package, I have a little care package to present to her as well. Aww. That's nice. Yes, you have to come get it. You have to come get it. Oh, of course. And it's green. <laughs> so that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for letting me share our good news with you. Yes.
Thank you, Ms. Newcomb, for that awesome presentation. I would like to give our board members an opportunity to respond as well as our superintendent, Mr. Heifel. Yeah, I um, really appreciate what you did for those guys. Wish somebody had done it for us. They used to send us foot powder and cigarettes, so, you know, you might be able to walk, but you're going <coughs> to. But, uh, no, I think it's great, and I think it's, it's really wonderful that the kids bought into it and did a good job. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Keep it up. Cause and I can cause it. it went from high to low that time, didn't it? <laughs> Still blasted it. Blasted. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Sanders just sat down. I don't know if she got a chance to see exactly uh, what the presentation is. <laughs> always, she's always ready. <laughs> Uh, the bottom line is the idea that it is good news, good news concerning any uh, operation care package and anything that we do to help our community, our kids. Uh, hats off to you as usual for a great job in demonstrating, not just saying, I, I was just uh, <coughs> driving earlier and saw someone with um, a uh, flat tire on this Bishop Ford that I just exited. And interestingly enough, we're in a society where people are kind of frightened about stopping and helping or lending a helping hand. So it's uh, still a world where we can exchange niceties, exchange uh, friendly gestures. And this uh, is another example of how you guys are demonstrating that to our children. So thank you again for your work. Thank you so much. Uh, when you give uh, care packages to those in service, they just appreciate it so much. And it's important that they know that um, you appreciate all that they give up to protect our nation. And as a veteran, I just appreciate what you guys have done. Thank yeah. you. I would like to say one other thing. I was rather glib at the beginning. These guys are out there getting shot at, you know, they don't know if they're going to be around the next day. And they get something like that from home. It means more than you will ever know. <laughs> Thank you. Mrs. Newcomb and Mrs. Bruns, thank you both. Um, as a parent of CSK, I know a lot of what goes on in that building. And um, as a parent that's been there since its inception, since the beginning, I know that even with Aaron DiBartolo, there was a lot of um, events going on where students did outreach. And what I love about the building is it's teaching the children that you have to give back what you can give back. And I know there's constant um, opportunities for them to do that. So I thank you even as a parent for sharing that with children. You know, we may as parents teach it at home, but to also get it at school is a wonderful thing. Also, I thank you all as well. Um, my husband is a veteran. Um, I, we have three veterans, I believe, sitting on this stage, and they live that life, and they know firsthand the challenges of living that life. And so to be able to get care packages that bring a smile to their faces is an awesome thing. So we thank you all.
Testing. 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 Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Testing. Test. I don't like testing. <laughs> testing. Testing. That concludes our good news portion of our board meeting. At this time, we are opening the floor for public comment. I direct your attention to the guidelines on our screen behind us. At this time, I'd like to call to the microphone Tammy Burnham, the reputation of the school district. Testing. Okay. Um, on February 19th, I attended a workshop for the Crete Comprehensive Plan. The plan paves the way for the future of Crete for the next 20 years in regards to development of our village, transportation, neighborhoods, parks, open spaces, housing, etc. Residents were encouraged to come as public input was critical. About 45 of us attended and voiced our opinions on what we thought were the most important ways to improve Crete. The general consensus of the group was that our school district was the number one reason people aren't coming to Crete any longer. New construction stopped overnight, young families won't move into Crete, and realtors are advising against it because of the school district's performances. The 201U reputation is dismal. A family buying a home in Crete, or I'm sorry, buying a home can move one village to the south or one village to the east of us and have schools where the students are meeting state requirements and less discipline issues. My question to the board is, what are your plans on improving this district? And what will you do to repair our reputation in the south suburbs to one of pride and envy again? Thank you. Next, I'd like to call Ms. Susan Duran. Balmoral teachers doing the polar plunge for Special Olympics. Well, first of all, I just want to apologize for looking a little crummy today. We had uh, our St. Patrick's Day, and we, if we wore green, we got to wear jeans. So we all wore green so we could wear jeans. Anyway, I'm here with some good news. Um, on March 7th in Mantino, uh, five employees from uh, Balmoral, where I teach, and one from the sixth grade center took part in the Illinois Special Olympics Polar Plunge. Now, I have to say we were lucky. It was a fairly warm day, but uh, when we hit the water, it did take our breath away. So I just wanted to come and uh, recognize the people that took part. Michelle Calderoni from the Sixth Grade Center, Karen Pickens, who's a cook in our building, Elaine Pankey, who is special education, uh, Janice Van Kuyken, our assistant principal, Chantel Perkins, our principal, and myself, and I teach reading, we took part in this. Um, it was very exciting that our principals took part. It was very exciting that we had our head cook take part. We also had um, one of our employees' daughters took part with us. Um, we raised over $1,500 for Special Olympics. I'm proud to say that that money will stay local. So our Special Olympians here in our district will get a bit, the benefit of some of that money, and it will go also you know, to some of the surrounding areas. But um, I think I did say the Moni event is the third largest. So. We had a great time, a lot of excitement. Um, I have to say, when we hit the water, it did take our breath away. But it was so much fun um, that we have a lot more people staff next year saying they want to be a part of it because they saw our excitement and our pictures and our little video that we took of ourselves. 
So anyway, I just want to say that's something really good that's going on in going on in this district to help the Special Olympians in our district that administrators did, teachers did, and other staff members did. So I just wanted to come share that good news. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. That's awesome. Next, I'd like to welcome Mrs. Doris Warren, Harmon Warren, budget question slash comment. I attended the budget hearings in the fall, and in the fall we were looking at a $5.7 million deficit. Throughout the fall I heard a lot of discussions about what the, our budget was going to be. A lot of those discussions included information about the state tax. It has been reduced back. Doesn't look like it's going to be changing anytime soon. We know the funding was really related to that, and at the time last fall, I had heard numbers of a potential $10 million deficit without that funding. I don't see any discussion about solving that issue, and I'm concerned that, there had, that we're thinking of still building in University Park with the $20 million we have when we're looking at deficits that we don't have a way to control. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to welcome Ms. Deneen Offord. Resignation of the band director of Creek Money Middle School. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Um, my name is Deneen Offord, and uh, we've been, my family has been a part of the district for 10 years now. Uh, my son is a Crete Money High School graduate, uh, 2012, and my daughter is currently at the middle school in eighth grade, and she is in the band under the, the leadership of Mr. Sam Hankins. Um, I was saddened to hear that he would not be returning next year. Um, one of the reasons we moved to this district was because of the excellent band program. And um, I believe that, and a few years ago, we had to fight to keep the band program in the district, first of all. And I believe that we should fight to keep those teachers, those individuals that uh, help move the program forward, that are good for the district. They make the district look good, and they're good for the children. Um, Mr. Hankins has taken the middle school band to a whole nother level. I mean, he's great with them. The kids really love and admire him. And um, I just ask that perhaps the board consider or even reconsider uh, the reasons behind his resignation um, because it would be a great loss to the district, to the band program in particular, to lose him. Uh, he's a great asset. And I just, I really, I hope the board can do something about that because it would be a great loss. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lastly, Mr. Todd Hall regarding the wrestling program. Good evening, and I thank you all for this opportunity to speak in regards to the wrestling program. First of all, I'd like to say that I don't think many people know that the wrestling team finished the year ranked 17th in the state. Um, they had two wrestlers who placed in the top six in the state. Um, one of the things that are concerning to me is the fact that they are practicing on a competition mat, which in turn can be dangerous and costly when it comes to the wear and tear of the mat. And the other mat that they use, they practice on and they also use it for competition and it's an older mat. At this point, they probably need three mats, but I'm just asking that you all consider at least providing two mats for the wrestling team. Um, these kids, this is a safety concern. This is also a concern when it comes to, they can use these mats to 
make money because then they can host regionals or sectionals, which we're not afforded the opportunity because we just don't have enough mats. We have the space, but not the mats to host events such as regionals and sectionals so that they can make money. I know I've been to several wrestling events and I've heard other wrestlers from other schools talk about how beautiful this school is. Um, we were at, at a prospect and the kids and the coaches received rave reviews as to how they ha um, handled themselves and how well they wrestled. They, they work really hard. And I just would hope that you all would consider finding some type of funds to provide these young men with the equipment they need, i.e. wrestling mats, for this upcoming season. Thank you all. Thank you. This Clarifying a question. Clarifying, I want to ask oh. a question. Uh, the mats that you speak of, are they being multi used for multi purposes aside from just the wrestlers? They're being used for wrestling, but when you practice on the mat, on competition mats, and use them for competition and a constant moving of the mats that creates wear and tear, and it starts to destroy the mats a lot faster. So what's going to happen is we're going to need mats. Right now they're practicing on a mat, or I mean wrestling on a mat, one mat that's probably over 10 years old and it's really worn out. And then one of the competition mats is, which is new, fairly new, it's one of the newer mats, it's starting to become worn as well. And as these mats wear, it becomes dangerous and it just looks bad for the, for the program as well. And these boys work hard and they deserve just the opportunity to practice on good equipment, and work on good equipment, whether it's practice or wrestling matches. Okay, and I'm sorry, forgive my lack of knowledge concerning mats specifically as they relate to wrestling. But so my question was, are the mats or can the mats, any new mats that may be purchased, can they be used as multi-purpose. In other words, can another group or athletic team use those mats? So if there is an investment in it, can they be used for a variety of other teams? They, they shouldn't be. For example, if cheerleading has, they have separate mats for cheerleading okay. and tumbling. And wrestling has separate because okay. just for the... Thank you. Next we have our board updates. I would like to say um, many of you have probably heard, I'm pretty sure you've heard um, multiple times um, information regarding the Five Essentials, Illinois Five Essentials survey um, that we are asking our staff and students and parents to complete. Um, there are certain thresholds that need to be reached in order for the state to even publish the results of the survey. Um, the survey is asking feedback on schools, school conditions, uh, a full gamut of perceptions of parents and teachers and students in regards to our individual s schools. At this time, um, in order for the school to be reported on the, the, the school report card, excuse me, we need at least 50% overall participation, and we have reached that for each school. However, each stakeholder group has a participation threshold that must be reached. And um, the one that we're most concerned with is our parent percentage. We need at least 20% of parents to participate in this survey in order for the results for parents to be published. Um, I believe we have, uh, is it one school that's reached 20%? And I believe, actually, no, actually we have a couple of schools. Okay, so we have Talala Elementary, Balmoral Elementary, Crete Elementary, Coretta Scott King Magnet School, and Moni Education Center. 
that have reached uh, or surpassed the 20% threshold. Our goal is to get all of our schools to surpass the threshold. We do value the input of our parents, and this is a way that we will be gauging. Um, a question was posed earlier, what are our plans for improving the district? This type of feedback helps us in creating those plans, so it's very important that our parents do participate in this survey. There is a link to the survey on the front page of our website. I believe it's right when you go on the front page. It's on the left-hand side, I believe, Natalie. Um, very uh, easy access. I believe it takes about 15 minutes to complete the survey. So this is a plea on the behalf of the Board of Education to our parents to please complete this. I know that we all live busy lives, and I know that you're probably tired of the robocalls coming home and asking you to participate. And uh, I looked at my message for the board meeting, and I, I think I went over probably a minute <laughs> within what I normally would like to do, but it was just important to me to also make a plea to our parents to complete this survey. So. Again, we're asking you to do that. I believe the deadline is it's this Friday, this Friday. Um, so again, please do that for us. Um, any other board updates? Well, I guess it's not much, so much of an update, but it's more of a, a recognition. And <clears throat> I really appreciate the opportunity. I don't believe I heard much on it with the spectacular event that occurred a couple weeks ago. I believe Mike Striverson is the president of, oh, he oversaw that event. And I actually had an opportunity to sit in on that and to get entertained. And it was really, really uplifting and a, a great event. So, and I even heard from an outsider, I believe he was one of the judges. I think his name was Dave Porter. He said, you guys put on a good show. So uh, kudos to Mike Stryverson and his team. And another recognition, our own secretary, they put on an event a couple weeks ago as well that was entitled, correct me if I'm wrong, Empowering Our Youth, Females specifically, that that was another hit as far as our school is concerned. Uh, again, congratulations. So, uh, one last thing, we got the debt policy. And thank you, Dr. Williams. We beefed up our debt policy big time, and I'm looking forward to see the results a long time from now. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to thank you, of course, uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, not often do you work with people that know how to say thank you, but uh, the program that Mr. Brown is referring to was not necessarily my doing for sure. Uh, I, like Mrs. Hall, heard uh, someone say in the audience, what are we doing to improve the uh, reputation of the district? And one such and many of the things that are done in and around the school is definitely indication that the school does not have a bad reputation. Uh, specifically, last Saturday evening, this auditorium was packed with young women, men and fathers, mothers and fathers, who greatly uh, respect what is going on in this district according to what they're seeing with their children and we were very impressed and I personally very proud to be a part of what we experienced on that day. So although uh, we don't please everyone and do everything that everyone wishes that we might would do, we are doing a great job. I'm for one extremely proud of the work that is being done in and throughout this district. Uh, so at the end of the day, when children and their parents are proud of what is taking place in their schools, to me at the end of the day, that is what counts most. So I wanna thank you all for your participation in that process. Again, I understand Spectacular, uh, as well as many other programs that take place in this school, are indication that we are doing some good things. We're just like any other district, not exactly perfect, but working consistently to do our very best. So thank you all. I, I know that Mr. Cunningham uh, was present, uh, Dr. Hall and uh, Mr. Brown, I thank you guys for participating, uh, at least in your presence on that occasion. And I know that those young people uh, feel very empowered as a result of the support that this school district has given them. So thank you. I'd like to say something. Uh, 
I'd like to remind the public that this is our last meeting before the elections. April 7th, we are going to vote for school board members, four of them. I uh, encourage each and every one of you here and in the uh, cyberspace to vote for the candidate or candidates of your choice. And um, use your civic duties. If you're happy, vote for what you've got. If you're happy you, and you know it, clap your hands. Clap your hands. If you're not happy, the ballot is, is there. Right. Thank you. Yes. Okay, and let's clarify. So the event was the Young Women's Empowerment Charity Gala event. It was hosted by two Crete Moni High School students. I was a volunteer parent as I am on a consistent and regular basis and so it was their project their senior project clear thank you thank you let's move on to our administrative updates curriculum Ms. Laura Hirsch well I'm happy uh, to report to the board and to the public um, that this year is the first year that we have received a report um, from the state um, for our English language learner program. Um, up until this point, we hadn't qualified based on the number of students. Uh, this is the 2013-14 was the first year that we actually um, qualified to receive a report on their performance. And the report is actually called the Annual Measurable Achievement Objectives, or AMAOs as it's referred to. Um, and we did get a letter in February that said that uh, we were meeting in all three areas of performance and those are the percent of students that are making progress in English, uh, English language proficiency as measured by our access test, the percent of students attaining English language proficiency, again measured by the access test, and then the percent of limited English, uh, limited English students uh, meeting or exceeding state standards on our state assessment. So we met in all three areas, um, and with your packet you have um, both the letter and the actual official report. So um, I'd like to uh, thank our ELL teachers. They're doing a, a tremendous job of getting our students um, to acquire the English le language, and uh, this is just a piece of evidence to support that. Thank you. I just want to thank you again, Laura. I don't think the story is, is being told and it's for fullness on just the academic success that we have exhibited over the many years. I don't think in so many levels that we are much higher than we were years ago, and it has a lot to do with you. And this is just a culmination <coughs> on the success that you have led in the curriculum process. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you're welcome, but again, it takes, it takes an entire team <laughs> to do the work, and we have a good team. Thank you. Thank you. Student Affairs update. Ms. Mon Mrs. Monica Spence. Thank you. We have um, the following Freedom of Information requests have been received. We have one from Ms. Tammy Burnham of Crete, Illinois. Electronic request received on February 23rd, 2015 as follows. Please break down the school district by village. For example, how many students in the district live in Crete and for all the villages. The status is a response containing the requested information was sent on February 27, 2015. And that concludes the FOIA request. Thank you. Okay, moving on to our consent agenda. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So move. Moved by Mr. Brown. Second. Second by Mr. Heisel. Any comments or questions? Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Heisel? Aye. Mr. Ture? I'm sorry. Sorry, can you repeat it? I was talking to the superintendent. Mr. Ture? No. This is a motion uh, oh, to you approve the to consent the agenda. Motion. For the entire consent agenda? Yes. Okay, I'm going to vote no.
Okay. And uh, Mr. Brown. Present. And Secretary Zai. Dr. Hall? Aye. Thank you. If it is the board's pleasure, after that vote, I would like to introduce a new employee. Um, if Mr. Juan uh, Lau would come up, our new director of IT. Oh. So is that a sign you're a smooth operator? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lyle. If you just introduce yourself real quick to the Board of Education, and we'll let you go so we can continue on. Good evening. That's your first task, fix yeah. it. Good evening. My name is Juan Lyle. I am the uh, former um, IT director of Brookwood School District 167. I look forward to the opportunity to um, make technical changes and improvements and to make the actual school, school district um, better in 21st century um, according to the actual vision of the superintendent. I look forward to working with all of you and it's a pleasure to be a part of this actual district. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome. At this time, I would like to acknowledge our donations. We are very privileged here at Cremonese School District. We do have a lot of people that care about our district and take the time to donate many things, so we'd like to always acknowledge them at our board meetings and our appreciation for those donations. I'd like to take the time now to communicate. Joanne Jones, principal at Moni Elementary School, would like to thank the Crete Moni Education Foundation for their monetary donation for their school store, the Mustang Corral. Ms. Jones would also like to thank Mr. Keith Murphy for his donation of iTunes gift cards for the school store. And that concludes this month's acknowledgments for donations. So thank you to all. <laughs> Moving on to our action reports. Superintendent Cunningham. Hmm. Good evening. Crete Money District 201U belongs to the Career Preparation Network, CPN, that is a network that comprises six partners, Prairie State College, Homewood Flossmoor High School, Bloom Township High Schools, Rich Township High Schools, and of course, our district, and the Illinois State Board of Education. This network was established by an intergovernmental agreement for the purposes of facilitating the administration of the state and federal career technical grants that funds nearly all of the career and technical initiatives in our district. Funding for this network derived solely from state and federal grants. However, the district is responsible for paying a small portion of the money to the network for services rendered until the state funding arrives to reimburse districts. 
We expect reimbursement for the state uh, to take place in the spring of 2015. Uh, it goes with our board policies. Uh, our Board of Education continues to support diverse educational opportunities for our high school students to ensure that we are meeting the needs and interests of all students. It is the recommendation of um, the administration to approve paying this invoice. May I have a motion to approve the Career Preparation Network invoice? Moved. Moved by Mr. Heisel. Second. Second by Mr. Brown. Any comments or questions? Secretary, please call the roll. No, I had a question. Can't hear. Okay. Career preparation. This is the Prairie State um, program that we have here at the high school, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's it's uh, <clears throat> it's been around for just under 30 years, and it provides the funding for career and technical education. Over the years, we've built the early college program, the dual credit program and the uh, programs that are tied over into Prairie State and down at uh, Kankakee Area Career Center. So that's what I want, to, all of that is on All board. that moves in together. Okay. All right, so Mr. Heisel. Aye. And Mr. Ture. Aye. And Dr., uh, no, I meant to say Mr. Brown. Aye. And secretaries, aye, Dr. Hall. Aye, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. IHSA membership. Creepony High School must renew its memberships to the IHSA, which is the Illinois High School Athletics Association. And the renewal is required, and the uh, Board of Education is the, uh, the organization that can renew it, uh, renew it for us. It is our recommendation that the Board of Education approve its renewal of the IHSA membership for Creek Money High School. May I have a motion to renew the IHSA membership for Creek Money High School? Moved. Moved by Mr. Heisel. Second. Second by Mr. Ture. Any comments or questions? I would like to say, um, my son, my son wrestles, as you all heard from my husband this evening. Um, we went to wrestling state competition this year, and I've been involved with IHSA for numerous years with a few of my, my children. An issue that I have with IHSA, which it may not be an issue, but as a parent, my observation is for example, with the state competition, the entry fees are enormous. And you end up paying a lot of money just to see your own child participate in a sport. Um, my comment to some of the parents was, if there's an issue with what's going on, speak up and speak loud. So my comment on this vote, uh, though I understand that we this is a partnership for our high school. I do feel like we need to speak up on certain things that are surrounding IHSA. Just because we're members does not mean that we have to agree with everything that's going on. They make a lot of money off of these competitions, and a lot of it is seen, and a lot of it is not seen. Um, I make a plea to any parents or any teachers to get involved. I don't know if I think they have a board. I believe they do. Um, but to get involved so we can um, give our input on that. And that's just one of the things that I have an issue with. Um, but I believe as parents of athletes, we have a voice and we need to be um, sharing our thoughts concerning things. And not only that, our voices as schools that are part of the membership sharing that as well. I can't remember exactly how much it was, but if, if 
I'm going to see my child and then I'm bringing brother and sister and spouse or whatever, we ended up spending a lot of money that weekend. So that's just a pet peeve of mine. It's an issue I know that we'll be looking into it just as parents. But um, that's a conversation that needs to be had. If we want to be members of IHSA, um, we have a voice and we have the opportunity to share. We'd like to be mem members, but these are some of the issues that um, we are dealing with. So that's my comment on that. I'd, I'd like to add something if you're done. Uh, amazingly, I, I agree with a lot of what you said, Ms. Uh, Dr. Hall. The IHSA I've been involved with for about 20 years when my kids went through school. Uh, it's basically a good old boy society, in my personal opinion. Uh, it is expensive. Resolution of disputes is al almost always sent right back to the school. You take care of it. Um, I'm not happy about them either, but I think they're the only, the only show in town. And, uh, uh, you know, I reluctantly will vote to be a member of it. There's a lot of other organizations out there, like LUDA and some of these others we paid thousands of dollars to that I think are totally useless. I won't vote for them, but I think the kids need the opportunity of the exposure from the IHSA. So uh, I, I agree, they need, a, they need a lot of help, and parents need to speak up when they have a problem. My kids also wrestled. They were uh, champions in, uh, in the local area, regional champions. We had issues with it. And that was uh, in the early 90s. So we, there's still issues. Thank you. Thank you. So what does, I, what does uh, I just say with the, all the questions surrounding it? The cost is? as well as what does the cover what does the cost cover do we have as with luda uh and in any other organization that we've selected to be members of uh for the reasons that they offer uh, for the services that they offer i don't think we're members of any organizations that don't provide a service so ihsa what is the service that is being provided and so are we getting what we are paying for uh, and do we have a representative uh, from our area, be it local, uh, you know, our athletic directors, our boosters, our uh, who? Who would be a representative to express uh, the concerns that you may bring as a parent to, to the organization? As you speak, the representative for our district for IHSA is headed to the mic if you have any questions or concerns. Okay. <coughs> Who is? Dr. Oh, hi, Dr. Good evening, everybody. It's my pleasure to answer questions uh, pertaining to IHSA or any other uh, membership affiliate affiliation from uh, Crete Money High School. Uh, well, I, I asked the question just simply what is covered uh, as a result of our membership? Um, the best way to describe is um, certainly. Uh, many and most of our inters, interscholastic athletic, uh, also our any interscholastic club or activity such as athletics is easy, the footballs, the basketballs, and it's also guaranteed through Title IX that we will have equal access to all folk to make sure everyone has an opportunity to participate. But also with the clubs or uh, student activities, we will include things such as the scholastic bowl to ensure that we're able to compete with not only with other schools, but to, to, to provide a high quality competition with rules, regulation, and guidelines and protections. And uh, much of that, if not all of it, will be based out of our uh, student activities and the accounts associated with that so that things are not directly debited from our uh, ed fund as well. I hope I said that correctly. Yes, you did. Um, I brought up the representative to say we have a representative in your questions and concerns can be taken to the IHSA from, um, by him. Absolutely. The, what they actually provide for us is an opportunity in a, in a series for the state series and um, for our, our regionals and our sectionals. IHSA designs all of those systems for all our athletics. 
the issue and concern that I've heard here are ones that I've heard over the years for quite a while when there's an issue or a concern. It normally comes back to our athletic director and it's about our <coughs> athletic director. We have Absolutely. to do the investigation. What the concern is, how do, there's a lot of money out there. Why doesn't the IHSA um, get involved and do the investigations? So far as, as members here and in other places, we have allowed the IHSA um, the opportunity just to sit back and, and kick it back to us. If we have concerns, we need to make sure that they're heard. And I, it wouldn't surprise me if there were other principals that were hearing this very same thing from their boards or, or their superintendents. We just need to make sure that we're heard. Um, price of tickets, um, that'll be a challenge because they know we want to see them. I mean, they do. <laughs> It was just frustrating because, you know, as a parent, of course, you want to see your, your child, but uh, you have to pay an arm and a leg. I think the tickets were $8 per person per session, and it was three sessions, was mm -hmm. two sessions, five, well, five total. So if you're taking your whole family, okay, you man on that. But, you know, we have six of us, so <laughs> I will certainly carry that, carry that forward. Uh, monthly, the uh, athletic directors of this conference have a uh, meeting where they discuss those things, and we can certainly take it to our the local level. Uh, Mr. Joe Rita, the athletic director, is the representative for this for our conference, but also uh, I will ensure that those concerns are forwarded to our representative in Springfield as well to make sure that we are heard. Um, I know that that ticket price comes up quite a bit. I mean, they have a racket. Let's call it what it is. They got a good thing going. They have a captive audience. Parking. Yes. Yeah. If if you can find out, see if you can get a, a breakdown on the on the salaries of Marty Hickman and the rest of the crew down there, because to my knowledge, they have refused year after year after year to divulge what they're making. And uh, it's not a you know. I will. Some, something's rotten in Denmark, as far as I'm concerned. And you're filling up State Farm. You abide. Absolutely. 20000 Again, do the math. Mm hmm. That's, that's what I'm saying. My older son is a record player who went through the State Series, <coughs> and, and, and it's expensive. It, it's but they don't really expensive. have to do anything because we're going to continue, people are going to continue, as you've said, for years and years, pay these membership fees so what and, and the parents are going to go see their kids participate yeah. so and they know that so hmm. yeah competition breeds breeds change and there's no competition for the ahsa that's the bottom line it's a monopoly it's state. very similar to the nc2a yes in exactly. that regard thank you doctor thank you moving forward to our business department business business Oh, we got any? We need a vote. Moving right along. Moving along. <laughs> Let's move along. I'm sorry, Secretary. Please come. <laughs> okay, Mr. Teray. I'm going to vote yes because the kids need it. <laughs> okay, Mr. Brown. Aye. And Mr. Heisel. Aye. And I, Secretary's I, Dr. Hall. Hi. Thank you. Okay, moving on to Dr. Williams, business report. Action, I'm sorry. Action. Good evening. Included in your packet is a recommendation to designate the person to, to designate a person to prepare the tentative budget for the next school year. As required by the Illinois School Code, the board must do that on an annual basis. And as, as we prepare the budget for next year, we are addressing the 
structural deficit that exists. We are looking to move to a modified zero-based budget in the new year. We're also looking to move to a site-based accounting manual. So we are making some changes to address the structural deficit that exists, and we are looking for your approval of the resolution to designate myself to prepare the 2015-16 budget, tentative budget for the next school year. Thank you. May I have a motion? Can I ask a question? Uh, I need to make the motion first. Okay. It moved. Second. Now I ask a question. Clear. Now I have a question. Repeat the motion, please. May I have a motion to approve the designation of the person to prepare the tentative budget as Dr. Ann Williams? Okay. Can I ask the question Sorry. now? It was moved by Mr. Heisel. Yes. Second by Mr. Brown. That's correct. You got that, Ms. Sanders? Mm -hmm. Mr. Trey. Okay. Um, Doris mentioned earlier in her public comment about the uh, the very good possibility that uh, money is going to be shrinking in uh, Springfield. Are you going to uh, present us with? alternatives to show us exactly what we can expect with funding as it is now and funding anticipated shortages? I plan to prepare some information to present to the Finance Committee in April and that information will then be shared with the board as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Secretary, please call the roll. Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Heisel? Aye. And Secretary's aye, Dr. Hall? Aye. BMO procurement Thank card recommendation. Yes. <clears throat> also included in your board packet is a recommendation to transition from the J.P. Morgan card that we currently utilize to a BMO credit card. The BMO uh, procurement card, rather, is a partnership with the Illinois Association of School Business Officials. While the program started in Illinois, the program has expanded to 16 districts across the country. And last year alone, the program returned $2.9 million to those participating members. For the state of Illinois in particular, there are 317 districts that are currently participating, and last year more than $1 million was returned to those school districts. Now the difference between the existing J.P. Morgan program and the BMO Harris P-Card program is the amount of the rebate. We have not received a rebate under the current program because we must have a certain level of spending and the amount of the rebate that we would receive is actually less than 1%. Uh, with the card that I am proposing that the board transition to, we would receive a rebate of 1% from, from the first dollar spent. So we would receive a rebate from day one, and that rebate would come in the form of a check. I think it comes in about April of every school year, so that would be putting money back into the budget as a result of using that program. Um, there is no cost to transition to this program. Also included in your packet is an overview of the program and additional benefits, uh, the board resolution that we're recommending tonight, and the member agreement. So with that, I'd be happy to address any questions that you have regarding the program. Let me put a motion out there. This is the program we outlined in the Finance Committee, correct? Yes, sir. The Finance Committee is making the recommendation. Yes. Okay. okay. I'll make a motion to approve the BMO procurement card recommendation. Moved. Moved by Mr. Heisel. Second. 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 Second by Mr. Ture. Any questions or comments? I just want to reiterate that we do have restrictions and limitations on the use of these big mo cards. The P cards. Big Mo P cards. The B Mo. Is that correct? Yes, sir. The um, cards are not given to anyone unless the superintendent has designated 
that person eligible for receiving a card, and the limits can be modified 24 hours a day online, so it is secure. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I can uh, only comment that it's definitely a better, it, we use it in our office, and it's definitely a better card than the JP, I mean the ease in the transaction. The P card is going to be, you'll see a tremendous difference and the ease of using it, so good luck. Thank you. <coughs> Secretary, please call the roll. Okay. Mr. Heisel. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Ture. Aye. And Secretary's aye, Dr. Hall. Aye. Yes, <clears throat> also included in your packet is a recommendation to approve the Burns Photography contract for our school yearbooks. Um, we did contact several different vendors and Burns was identified as having the best value and the highest quality. There was less than a dollar variance between the cost of the different vendors. Um, the initial order will be for 225 books if the board approves it at a rate of $38.94 per book. And we are recommending approval at this time. Can I have a motion to approve the yearbook vendor contract for Crete Money High School? So move. Moved by Mr. Brown. Second. Second by Mr. Heisel. Any comments or questions? Yes, I have a question. We talked at the Finance Committee about a, a, a contract that was signed by one of our previous administrators for the previous com the company we currently use. That was a two-year deal. I asked at that time if we check with legal and make sure that um, it's not binding in any way that we're spending money in litigation. Has that been accomplished? That has been accomplished. And we're good? My understanding is we're good. Thank you. And, and thank you for making those. I don't know if Dr. Harden is out there. He was the big player behind putting this contract together. Is that correct? Yes. yes that is correct. Okay. He did make the corrections. It looks as if he did make some <laughs> the corrections <laughs> type yes. of the corrections. <laughs> did all those commas and periods and advisor. Uh, oh, not an E. Thank you. Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Torrey? Aye. Mr. Heisel? Aye. And Mr. Brown? Aye. And Secretary's aye. Dr. Hall? Aye. Moving on to human resources. Mr. Lyle Neal, staffing resolution. The first resolution is a staffing resolution uh, with uh, three groups of people recommended by administration. Uh, one is recommended by administration for a non-tenured staff dismissal and uh, several resignations. And then also a list of uh, those individuals who have requested retirement at the end of this school year. So we would recommend approval of the resolution. Second. Yeah, I do. Uh, these reductions that you're going to do, can you explain it? Uh, why we're why we're releasing these people, and uh, if it's for cause or not cause? And what's uh, explain it a little better than that? The, uh, the release is at the recommendation of the building administrators who completed the evaluations of the individuals. So it's based upon that information. That, that's for all the ones that uh, we're going to release? As far as, as, far as this uh, performance dismissal, yes. Okay. Thank you. Secretary, please call the roll. 
Okay, Mr. Ture. I'm going to vote no. And uh, Mr. Heisel. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Secretaries, aye. Dr. Hall. Lastly, resolution for amendment to superintendent contract. The Board of Education has established the evaluation of our current superintendent. As a, as a result of the evaluation, the board determines whether the superintendent is meeting his established goals. This board has determined that our current superintendent has met his goals and we will continue to monitor his goals. As a result of the evaluation process, there are some amendments to his current contract, including changing of the date of his evaluation, establishing a date of, of the state of, a, state of the district address, employment language for his contract 2014 to 2018. Can I have a motion to approve the resolution for amendment of the superintendent contract? Moved. Moved by Mr. Heisel. Second. Second by Mr. Brown. Any comments or questions? Yeah, I have some comments and questions both. Did you just say the contract from 2014 to 2018? Yes. Okay. And uh, the current contract expires when? 2017. Okay. So we're going to add a year to the contract? Yep. As a recommendation of the personnel committee to the entire Board of Education. Okay. Now my comments are, you know, uh, Mr. Cunningham's only been here eight months? Somewhere in there? Uh, we got a contract 217. Uh, what my comment is, I, I don't see the urgency in doing this at this point in time. So that I'll leave the comment at that. I think the, personally, I think the rollover is, is well deserved. I've seen actions in the superintendent um, based on many years of experience with many superintendents. I think as a first year superintendent, I, I'm really, uh, it's not easy. And he's shown us uh, things that many of our past superintendents did not. Uh, degree of integrity, strength, and the ability to act. So I am definitely in favor of this emotion. Uh, I concur certainly with uh, Mr. Heisel. Uh, our job is to definitely uh, evaluate the superintendent. We've done so, and in evaluating him both as a, a parent uh, and, as he said earlier, uh, our previous um, administration has not shown, and, and I'm free to say it, uh, the same level of integrity, and it has been a pleasure actually to sit on this board and to witness the changes, the improvements, and the uh, level in which, and the commitment, I should say, uh, that you have ex ex illustrated, uh, Mr. Cunningham, so I'm 100% supportive of this resolution. And I too, <laughs> Mr. Cunningham, that you have exhibited those characteristics and attributes of that of a leader, of that being a superintendent. I didn't get a chance to conduct an initial interview of you, but I took my colleagues, uh, just their, you know, advice that this is this is going to be a winner for us, and they have proved right. So continue doing what you're doing. And there's always room for improvement for everyone, and I'll be the first to raise my hand. So continue doing what, you, what you're doing. We have, uh, you have our support, our full support, 100%. So thank you for your rigor. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for relocating your family and putting this school district, it seemed what, you know, somewhat in front of your family. So thank you, sir. My comments will be brief. Um, I will say from the point of the president of the board, um, as board members, we have to work with a leader um, of the district, which is your superintendent. 
And as board president, I work a little bit closely uh, with the superintendent. And I have to say that I share the sentiments of my colleagues. Um, and Mr. Cunningham is, is a leader of just trustworthiness. He's reliable, integrous, accessible. Those are the types of things that show a strong leader. Sitting in the seat of board member is not always easy. It can be very challenging. Therefore, when you have a strong leader that's by your side and in this journey with you, that's something to cherish and value. So I support it as well. Secretary, please come. Okay. Mr. Heisel? Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. Secretaries, aye. Mr. Ture? No. And Dr. Hall? Aye. Okay, any old business? Any new business? Yes, I have some new business. A um, couple of things I wanted to talk about. I, I noticed in the, um, in the packet here, I had asked a question about a week and a half ago about uh, the priority system for purchase orders. I've, I've been told that uh, more, more often than not, purchase orders take a couple of weeks to get through the system to get us some supplies that we need. Uh, I wanted a, a, a briefing on this and a, and a written response to uh, what our priority system is and uh, how it works. Uh, how do we determine what is a priority? We, for instance, we had this bulb issue come up at the last meeting, uh, finance committee about bulbs for the uh, whiteboards. And, um, you know, um, the information that I received was the order was put in and uh, it took two weeks to get through the PO process and then it was another week, they were still waiting on a bulb. Uh, you know, I've talked to many teachers. Uh, they tell me that the emphasis on technology is tremendous, and I agree with that. And, uh, you know, this, things like this user replaceable item to keep the technology going should not be something that they got to wait three weeks for. Uh, some kind of a priority system needs to be established so that we can get these POs in and out in a day, I also recommended, and I will recommend again, that we have small bench stock kept by our IT department of a couple of bulbs on hand so that there's not a week and a half or two days or any downtime when a bulb goes out. And uh, as soon as one is used, obviously, we replace it to keep a couple in stock. That's item number one. Uh, Can I answer item number one? You can answer it. Okay. I sent a letter, an email to the Board of Education because of the concern that we have. And after uh, studying that, what we found was that the next morning there were two bulbs out. And of the two bulbs out, one of them went out the middle school that morning. Both of those bulbs were replaced. We also went through the system to find out if there were any other boards, the bulbs that were out. What we found was there were four bulbs that weren't quite out. They were flashing that they are close to being out. And we normally keep a small uh, number of bulbs on hand. We are doing those items. The priority order for purchase order system, uh, we will be working on one of those for everything in the district. Since I got here, I want to know, and I talked to uh, Dr. Williams about that, how many purchase orders or, or, or priority orders for purchase orders how many of those are out? How fast as they come through? We need to be able to tell you that about not only purchase orders, but our work orders. We need to be able to tell you that they've come in five days, three days. What's our average? We will have that done. We will get that established. Okay, and you're going to write a policy on that? So, policy so or procedure. Procedure, no, procedure is fine. That's good. I'd like to see it. And I agree with the maintenance also. Um, I also have another new business item, uh, response for inquiries. Uh, I have routinely waited days, sometimes weeks, for responses when I contact uh, the uh, superintendent. 
I would really appreciate getting responses in a timely manner. I, uh, I don't appreciate waiting a week and a half to get an answer to a question. I don't bug you and send you a lot of frivolous things, but I would appreciate uh, a response time in a timely manner so that I can act upon the inquiries that are presented to me by my constituents. And I can't answer questions when I don't have the answer to provide them. So thank you very much for that. And then the last item I have is about this. Uh, I would like to address to, uh, I guess, to Laura. This Illinois State Board of Education. Uh, Can I correct you? And then you probably want to address that to me. OK, I'll address it to you then. All right, this I, Illinois State Board of Education has got this new rule coming out uh, that came out about uh, IEPs and uh, suspensions of students and uh, meeting a quota that the state has established of 1.5%, and we are currently at 3.2%. And I am concerned that at this point in time, it's for students with disabilities under the IDAA. IDEA, our kids with IEPs. And I understand next year it's coming out for the general population, if that's true. I don't know if you know if that's going to happen or not. But it takes this tool away from our teachers to discipline the children and provide a suspension. I understand most of this is for tardiness and cutting class. It's not in-class discipline issues, but it, it's all bunched into one. And, um, you know, I do not want to see our teachers made to be parents or made to have additional duties to sit down and counsel. I think uh, we either need the professionals to do this or we have to find a better way, detentions or something, to um, if we're going to meet this requirement, which I personally feel is ridiculous, but um, if we're going to do it and the state's going to take our money away or the feds are going to take our money away, we need to come up with a system that doesn't further burden the teacher. Uh, they have a hard enough job just keeping the classes going and doing their very best to teach the kids. I don't want them to become social workers or counselors and add that to their already full plate. So, um, you know, I, I think you need to look, I understand we have to have a plan in place by the 27th of the month, and um, I'd, I'd like to be involved with that and see it before you put this plan together. I'd appreciate if you would coordinate with me and I'll sit, sit with you, whatever it takes. Thank you. If that's the pleasure of the board that we run that plan by them or by an individual board member, that'll be done. But uh, first of all, you've got to understand um, there were some missteps before, definite missteps um, that happened before I came here because these this complaints is about three years before we got here. The new team that is around the table, we're here to make sure we educate all children. And I heard that from you. But part of that education process is working with our teachers, not burdening our teachers. Uh, our job is not to burden our teachers but we will work with our students to make sure that they are successful. That is the only job that we have. And, and as I told you before the board meeting, the least we're ever gonna do here in this district is follow the law. And that's the law of the land that they've given us. So we're going to come up with a system. We will make sure that it's taken care of and we'll take care of those missteps that have happened in the plan. Well, it's, an, it's another mandate that, this, that they've sent to us with no funds at all. And if they want us to modify the way we do things, and, and if they, it comes to hiring professional counselors or whatever it takes, uh, it costs money, folks. You know, this ain't coming out of thin air. You know, and uh, um, I think you need to look at it real hard. And I also think I've asked you to be involved with it. I had no idea that it's the pleasure of the board that I can be involved with this. Um, I'm sitting here as a board member, as an elected official, and I would like to be involved with this process. And I'd like to find out what's going to happen, and I'd like to review it, and I'd like it explained to me in layman's terms and what we're going to do. 
Just so we're all clear, because I don't think you're being excluded uh, from any process. Uh, as a board, we've agreed, for those of us who've come to the workshops and the committees, we've agreed that we would uh, not burden the administrative. So I've been told the same thing, that I can't ask a question or belabor them to do any one such thing. So let's then agree as a board that your concern is one that we all can sit down, not one individual uh, receive one such information, because it's not like you're the only person, or I may be the only person that has the concern. So if we can agree, is uh, the pleasure of the board has been said so many times, and we agreed to it. So if we didn't want to do it, uh, the public uh, expectation or speculation that it's not something that was previously agreed to internal and behind closed doors, that's not news, and it's not new. Well, this letter is dated February 23rd, and I got it today. What's the date today? It's, Mar it's March, uh, what, 17th, St. Patrick's Day? This is almost a month later. I, no time for me to ask any questions, no time for me to even find out what this was about. Why, why the delay from February 23rd to March 17th to get this uh, information? I don't understand that. That information came from the board of it, um, from the Illinois State Board of Education. As soon as we got the information, we had to investigate what it was and what we had to do with our interim special ed director. We gathered a team to start doing the work, and I reported it to the board in the next FYI, which was Monday. And let me even say, um, our prior administration, we did not get any type of information like this. So I do appreciate um, our current superintendent informing, of, informing us of what is going on with the Illinois State Board of Education. Um, I'm not very clear about your concern, Mr. Ture. However, um, I agree with Mrs. Sanders. We need collective board conversations, particularly on issues that will potentially affect our district in a great way and the appropriate conversation to have would be at our education committee meetings which we do have some very rich conversations at those committee meetings so just like any other board member you're invited to attend those and I would even say to Laura um, let's start looking into the concerns and maybe you can totally clarify what your concerns are we can definitely put that on the agenda for our education. I'm concerned with, let me clarify it for you. I am concerned with what the alternatives are going to be to suspension and expulsion. That's what I'm concerned with. How are we going to implement, what we're going to implement, how we're going to pay for it, when we're going to do it, and, and what it's about. That, that's what I'm concerned about. And I'm concerned about classroom management for the teachers so that they, they uh, don't have one less tool in their tool bag to do something about the disruptive child or the child that's tardy all the time or the child that cuts class. And, and the children don't get the impression that they've got a get out of jail free card. That's what I'm concerned about. So far the bill hasn't gone any place. It's that's still in committee. That's the regular education bill, the mm -hmm. special education bill that we the have. Special here. education is a different ballgame well, altogether. Doing this, and this is not new. Nothing new. Uh, special education for, correct me if I'm wrong, 30, 35 years. Maximum suspension is 10 days. If it fits under the student's <laughs> IEP, you can't do anything about it. You may change placement, but that's about it. Which so, is an additional cost many times. A month. Yeah, and oh, and the additional cost has always been passed on to the district. I know exactly what you're saying because I was in a situation where we had to fund for a child to go out to Minneapolis and live out there, fly her home on weekends. Thank you, Feds. I'm just concerned that discipline should change behavior. Discipline is not punishment. It should be used to change behavior. And if we have no teeth or no consequence, we're not going to change the behavior. We've got 
you know, we're, we're going to educate these children for 12 years and we're going to put them out the door. And they're going to hopefully become productive members of society. That's the goal. That's what we should be striving for. And they should understand that there are consequences for, for their actions. Good and bad. That's all I'm trying to say. This doesn't make any common sense to me. And God, we have lost common sense in this country. So once again, let me get clarity for Mrs. Ms. Hirsch. This is pertaining to the special ed law. Correct. And, and I was told and it's... The limitations of suspension, et cetera, for special ed students. Which we have about 800 and that last year we had 800 and uh, what's 815 and you divide that into whatever we got 4,400 kids. That's a large percentage of the population and supposedly this bill is going to pertain to the entire population next year. So I don't know. I can't see the future but if it does you're opening up Pandora's box. I think the, uh, if, if there's to be uh, a great deal of further discussion on it, we're talking about, and I hear you mention it quite regularly, uh, a constituency base. So this is going to include parents of students who have special ed students. Uh, I wonder what you think their considerations would be. Uh, so they too should be, I heard you mention the teachers. These are uh, their students that are affected here. Uh, the, the discipline that is handed down, this needs to be communicated and there should be further discussion. Parents should have a say as well, not just one uh, party or one entity. So if we want to start a conversation, it should be had with all the parties, the students, the parents, as well as the teachers, they're not the only ones uh, affected in the process. So uh, perhaps uh, one of those, uh, a community uh, discussion about it, opposed to just saying that even us as a board uh, should try to do anything to mandate or change or irreconcile laws that the state has already mandated. But if, as we've talked about uh, with IHSA or anything else, the state it uh, has elected officials as well as we are. So if people want this changed or some amendments addressed, then they need to, we need to bring this message to the people and they, not us, can mandate it because we don't agree with it or because uh, it doesn't make sense to us. Uh, there's a lot of things here uh, that don't make sense, particularly how the state of Illinois does funding for the school districts in general so but do do I get to do you get to make the determination but we can bring the message to our constituents and ask them to go with us as you've been an advocate for for quite some time along with the rest of us so I think if Laura's going to put it on the consent agenda then it needs to be a, a more public discussion than a smaller subcommittee is my suggestion I have no problem whatsoever with getting a public meeting on this, but you got you got 10 days to have an answer to the state. There's no time to do that at this point in time. And I'm sure, yeah, <laughs> it, Tom, as Tom's just whispered in my ear, that was intentional. I need, I need you to make sure that we're all on the same page here. This is law of the state, and we have to follow it. And we have work that we can do that will not burden our teachers. There's, there's work that we do to take care of our students. I know that's what you want. I know we want every one of those there students taken care of. And I know that I've, there's the old saying that if, um, if your only tool is a hammer, everybody and everything looks like a nail. So we will come up with tools and we will work with our students to ensure that they are successful. The least we're gonna do here is follow the law. We, we can't change the law unless you're going down to uh, Springfield with a group that we can't get them to do that. We've this, got to follow the law. This is a federal law. Mm -hmm. We need to look into it. And according to Dr. Ireland, our temporary lady in charge of special education, because I argued the same thing, Mr. Cunningham. I said, we need to go down to Springfield. We need to talk about it. She said, this is a federal mandate. Mm -hmm. This is not a state law. This just came through the Illinois State Board of Education under their letterhead, but it's mandated by the federal government. 
The man now is that his, wrong? Or no, no. That's who's not, wrong? That's that's not wrong. It's it's both things. Every state has the mandate that comes from the feds. How our different um, state boards handle those mandates are different. And the Illinois State Board is who sent you this letter. The Illinois State Board is the one that is enforcing this letter. They're the ones that are asking us to follow the law that is here. So they are in Springfield. Can you just make this last comment? Um, I believe that the idea is to hold students accountable um, for their actions. At the same time, there are state mandates as to how many minutes students must have in math, reading, et cetera, et cetera. Um, pulling kids out of school does not allow them to meet those minutes of instruction time. So this is really where a lot of this is coming from. Um, but I do look forward to the conversation. Thank you. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Moved. Moved by Mr. Heisel. Second. Second by Mr. Ture. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those right. opposed say nay. We are adjourned. Thank you all.